Hey guys, finally it is January 10th and we have the update that I have been waiting for. I'm pretty sure you guys have been waiting for it. This is update 1.21 to Weight of the Hunter and this brings the rare fur variations into the game. And uh, oh yeah, you can listen to the, the radio and the, uh, the Jeeps as well. Um, so I've actually tried to do this video several times today. And for some reason, I, I can't get it to copy to my USB. Hopefully, the third time will be the charm. So let's kind of go over things here. So it says, some long-awaited features are still to come, but we have excellent additions and quality of life improvements for you before the end of this year. Hmm. So it's already the beginning of the year. So that very much tells me that they they did plan to have this out, um, you know, before probably Christmas would be my guess, but it just didn't work out that way, unfortunately. Uh, but we have it now, so that's awesome. Uh, so, as Nespers Valley and Transylvania locations are pretty large, you're spending a lot of time traveling the countryside in the car. You can spend it while listening to our dedicated radio station now. 50 hand-picked tracks are waiting for your ears while traveling, too. New tasks that are waiting for you in Nespers Valley and Transylvania. 11 in total. You can get better when trying to accomplish shit with helpful tool tips during the loading screen. It might seem like a simple thing, but it will alert you about features you might have missed. Difficulty selection, for example. Every difficulty in the way of the hunter offers a different experience, and you can choose it in the main menu or at the start of the new game now. It's hard to pick and choose important features from this update. We're still working on the multiplayer experience. You can taxidermy animals now, even if you are not the game owner, because we know we have to serve you better. Please look at all the improvements and fixes in this update and let us know on Discord or Facebook. So... Um, before we get to the patch notes, let, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the new additions. Um, the, the vehicle radio, honestly, I'm in their Discord and I'm trying to think. I don't remember ever seeing anybody really ask for that. Maybe, maybe they did, and I'm just not remembering. I mean, I do know that some of the Jeeps have a radio where uh, I remember the radio looked like it was on. So maybe it was something that they've always wanted to put in the game and just didn't. Uh, I don't know. I, I do feel that... And before before we get into it, let me just say, it's free. Okay? All, everything they're giving us, uh, the rares, the vehicle radio, it's free. They're, they're giving it to us. It's not like it's DLC. So... I'm never going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Um, these developers want to give us free anything. They want to add anything to the game that we don't have to pay for. I think that is fantastic. And, you know, big thumbs up to Nine Rock for that. Um, so don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not complaining about the vehicle radio. The only thing I'm saying is that I, I do feel that in the scheme of things, that kind of felt like something... That could have been added later into the game's life. Um, I think right now, more hunting stuff <laughs> um, should be a little bit more of a priority. Um, but I mean, then the vehicle radio adds a little bit of element of, of fun to it. And, you know, I will say the radio tracks, from what I've heard, um, they range from kind of like moody, ambient country Americana to more upbeat uh, country rock upbeat kind of like a Americana type of music um, so I don't have anything against music I love music I'm a musician I play guitar I absolutely love music I don't spend a lot of time in the Jeep um, that may change maybe I should use it more maybe you know it, it would take a lot less time to get to, to certain areas but yeah it's just something I don't use a lot so Feel free to drop in the comments, what do you think about that? You know, do you use the Jeep? Um, are you someone that thinks that the vehicle radio is a cool addition? I mean, again, like I said, it, it's free. It's not like you have to use it. It's just there. It is what it is. So moving on, the added animals for rare variations. Um, of course, this is something that we've known for a long time now. We have the melanistic mule deer and roe deer, and we have albino for white-tailed deer and red deer. And if I can just talk about that for a minute... We have an albino, quote unquote albino, <laughs> white tail in the background here. And also, if we go all the way up back up to the top, God, I wish this would scroll a little bit faster. Um, we see 
another albino whitetail sitting there. Is this an albino? I don't... I don't know. I don't feel... I don't feel that this is an albino, guys. I feel like this is a white... whitetail. Um... I live in upstate New York, and I know in the southern tier of the state, we have a protected herd of all white, white-tailed deer. This is exactly what they look like. Um, brilliant white, black nose, black eyes, you know, um, albinos, they tend to have pink noses and pink eyes. Uh, am I right or am I wrong? You know, let, let me know in the comments, guys. Albinos... Uh, as far as I can tell, albinos usually have pink noses and pink eyes. They don't have any black. That's why they're an albino. They, they lack uh, the black pigment. Uh, melanistic animals, they lack the pigment that puts whites and, and other colors in their fur. That, that's kind of the point. So with the albinos, I'm not really feeling that they're albino as much as they are just white fur variations. With that being said, it's just, it's going to be awesome to have any variation in the game to look for and to look forward to, to seeing on your map and especially putting in your lodge. I mean, imagine having, you know, a max scoring albino whitetail that you could put in the multi-mount of the, the three other whitetails. You know, I think that would be... Amazing. Um, do they have a white tail a multi mount with a male and a female? Um, if they if they do, that would be cool. I think they do with the uh, the mule deer. Um, I think they do with the red deer as well. Maybe it's the red deer, but that that would be really cool. Um, so yeah, I, I I like it. Don't get me wrong, I like it. I'm just saying to me personally, when I look at this deer right here in this picture, I'm not seeing albino as much as I'm just seeing a white white tail. Okay, so, they added MP taxidermy. Now, this is interesting to me because that means that that wasn't a bug, that you couldn't taxidermy animals in multiplayer. That was never added into the game. So, that's, that's a very strange thing to me to think that they added multiplayer, and if you're not the host, you can't sell the animals, and you couldn't taxidermize the animals so what exactly is the point in, in multiplayer I'm, I'm not really sure and the funny thing is i've heard from people i've heard from some people saying that they've been in multiplayer on ps5 and they've never had a problem um obviously i, I can't say that I, I actually you guys can go check out the video i did last week it was actually pretty comical i hopped in multiplayer just a, a random a random session and uh yeah i couldn't I couldn't sell the animal. It was a, a mountain goat, and it came literally floating into me. All kinds of weirdness in multiplayer. All kinds of a weird stuttering thing. Uh, so yeah, for me, it, it's completely broke. And I just want to touch on that for a second here. I don't play multiplayer that much, much anyway. In, in any of these games, multiplayer is never really a big deal to me. Um, Multiplayer is something fun to do if I have friends that I, I want to play the game with. Um, none of my friends have PS5, so they're not on this game. So for me to just get into a, a multiplayer session with random people, yeah, I, it's not it's not fun for me. Second of all, with the mul multiplayer in this game, it doesn't really make sense to me because you can control your own herds. So, you know, you, you can produce the five stars if you really want to go that route. So there's really no point in going to other maps. I guess with the albinos and yeah, the other rares and stuff like that, that may give you a little bit more of a reason because you can map hop it and try to find the rares on, on those maps. But again, I much prefer to try to find those animals on my maps first. With that being said, I do feel that when you buy a game, a game is a product. So anything that they feature in that game that's supposed to work should work you know uh i find it kind of funny because i feel like video games are the only product and they're the only industry that they can put out a product and say we'll fix that later don't worry about it you know we'll fix it later that that would be like imagine buying a brand new television bringing it home hooking it up 
got a beautiful picture, no sound. And you contact the manufacturer, and they're like, yeah, we, we know, uh, we're going to patch that. Don't, don't worry about it. You know, and in a month or two, you'll have sound. You know, yeah, no other product being sold today could get away with that. Um, but with video games, it's just, that's just the way it is, you know? And I mean, we kind of had to live with it because what else are we going to do? You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, so it is kind of a shame about the multiplayer for those that do enjoy that. So they have the loading screen tips. Um, they added additional objectives. So there's six new tasks for the Nespers Valley. There's five new for Transylvania. Tweak, improved main menu AI. Difficulty selection before starting a new game and difficulty selection in the main menu. Tweak character animations. This one is curious to me because do they mean I don't I don't know what they what they could have tweaked with the character animations. I, I don't really know. I don't know if that's something in multiplayer when you're seeing others or if they're just talking about the general animations when you you know lift up the rifle or the binoculars or something like that. I do know they still have not fixed the binocular glitch on PS5. Um, sometimes you'll fast travel and if the binoculars aren't out, then you have to switch to a gun or a collar and then switch to the binoculars to get the binoculars back out. So that's still a bug that they haven't fixed and I really wish they would fix because it's not, I mean, it's just an annoyance, basically. Okay, so here's some fixes. They fixed the gray leg goose or Ross the goose, sometimes T-posing kill cam, missing teeth of animals in the inspect mode, ambient sound volume increasing in UI, uh, vehicle physics. Players able to flip the car or throw it in the air with the character. I did not even know about that one. Uh, that one's new to me. Uh, they fixed large animals sometimes not fitting in the hunting overview. Overview. Waterfowl getting stuck in a loop flying between two near need zones. Thank God that was annoying. Environmental issues. Uh, tree placed inside the rock. Tree placed inside the rock. I, I, a, a specific rock? Or just rocks in general. I don't I don't know. I've never seen that one. And misplaced water texture. It seems like there's a lot of issues with water textures um, in this game. I, I've seen them, them fix that quite a bit. So here's all the fixes to the multiplayer, guys. Opening the claim screen triggers respawn of dead animal bodies. Players not seeing gamer tags in the hunting map. Clients not able to hear some animal cues squeaking. Private areas behaving differently for client and host. Texture to my animals from MP was not available in single player. Interesting. So those are all the fixes and all the additions for this update. Now, let me just say that I, I did notice when I went into the game, and we're not going to go into the game right now, because um, I'm, I'm not going to look for an albino in this video. That's, you know, I'm assuming that these are going to be proper rare, and it'll take a while. Um, this Friday, we will be back with a live stream. We will be trying to get either a rare mule deer or a rare whitetail for sure this Friday. Um, but I like what they're doing with the game. I like what they're doing with the game. Um, I do kind of feel with the multiplayer that if they're not... Uh, I don't want to say they're not working hard to get it fixed because I don't know how difficult it is to fix the issue that they're having with not being able to sell the animals in multiplayer. That's that's the first thing. So I'm not going to say that they're, they're not trying to fix it, but I will say this. It does seem like they focus a lot more on the single-player experience overall instead of the multiplayer. I mean, every patch, we do get multiplayer fixes, but I feel like that, that biggest issue is just glaring, and that's... Actually, the biggest issue when you're playing multiplayer that you can't sell the animals that you kill. Like, what's the point? You know, what is the what is the point in playing multiplayer when you don't get any for you can't tax you couldn't tax your demise, you couldn't sell the animal. So yeah, what was uh, what was the point in playing multiplayer? Um, I, I feel like possibly if it was something that wasn't ready. They should have added it later on in the game. Just release the game as a single-player experience and say multiplayer will come at a later time when we get it all fixed and straightened out and, and stuff like that. But overall, I, I'm I'm happy with these devs. I think these devs are doing the right thing. Um, they give us a lot of free stuff. And, you know, I've had a couple comments on my videos 
complaining about the content. I've heard I, I've heard some people complain that, you know, instead of put out content, fix the game. And I, I hear this with every game. Every game that I play, it, you hear the same comment. Don't put out content, fix the game. Well, here's the deal. What content have they put out? We haven't seen a new reserve yet. We haven't seen any DLCs for the season pass because the season pass is literally just two new reserves. That's it. They gave us some new guns in the way of the Remington, right? They've given us several new animals. They've given us the rares now. You know, I mean, they're not giving us a, a ton of things. I, I feel that it's a, it's a pretty good balance. And again, I'm going to say this. In all of these video games, these developers, they have people that work on content. They have people that work on bugs. Those two teams don't cross, okay? So the people that are working on the content it does not affect the people working on the bug fixes. Those are two separate teams. So to sit there and say, you know, don't put out content, fix the game, well... The game is getting fixed. The people that are working on the bug fixes are working on the bug fixes. And the guys and gals that are working on, you know, new content, you know, new animals, new fur variations, new weapons, new maps. That's their job. They're they're not responsible for fixing the game. They're responsible for bringing out the new stuff. You know what I mean? So it doesn't affect each other. It, it doesn't have anything to do with the other one. They can release new content and they can put out bug fixes. Again, I'm not a developer. I'm not a programmer. The issue that you're having in multiplayer, I don't know, you know, how difficult it is to fix. Maybe it's a lot more difficult. Um, within the game, yes, there, there are some minor bugs in the game that are annoying, but those kind of bugs, they're going to be in the game. We still have minor bugs in Call of the Wild, and that's going on six years old. All right. Um, and what they do is they gauge it by how many people are having the issue. So if more people are having an issue with this bug than, than say, you know, this, this bug, like maybe the binocular glitch. I don't know how widespread that is. Maybe that's not as widespread as other glitches in the game. So the complaints that they get for bugs that they have a lot, a high number of people complaining about, those will get taken care of first. The other bugs will get put on the back burner. So that's just uh, that's just really the way it is. Again, my personal opinion about the vehicle radio, I'll say it again. I feel like that they could have added that a lot later in the game's life. Um, if they plan on supporting this game for years to come, which I don't know, they still haven't really confirm that that i've seen maybe they did maybe they did maybe i just didn't see it but i haven't seen anything concrete yet about how long they plan on developing this game i would have to assume that they're going to go you know toe to toe with call of the wild and uh, the hunter classic in terms of content and longevity because i don't know i don't know how much people would be willing to buy a brand new game every couple years when you have games like Call of the Wild and Classic that are constantly being developed. You know, that's just my personal opinion on it. Overall though, um, the update, I, I hope goes well. Like I said, I haven't really played it a lot yet. Um, if you want to see, tune in this Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be going live. I will be hunting some rares on the Nez Perce Valley. I hope you guys can all be there. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. But until then, guys, happy hunting.